Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's VBOT tutorial video, we'll be looking over distance sensor and we'll also be writing controller code for distance sensor in C. If you're looking for VBOT's controller code for distance sensor in other programming languages such as C++ and Python, look for the link in the description below. I'll include all of the timings for this video here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. In our previous VBOTS tutorial video, we created our own custom two-wheel differential drive robot and also wrote the controller code to drive it around. If you don't have this robot, use the link in the description to download it and then save it in the proto folder of your project and then load it by clicking on add, proto node current project and differential drive robot with ice. Because I already have a robot, I'm not going to click on add. So let's get started. For the first step, we're going to add the distance sensor to our robot. As you can see, our robot has two eyes and this is a great place for us to add our distance sensor. So on your VBOT scene tree under robot, children, look for the eye. Under there, go into children. This is where we will add our sensor. So it has the same translation as our eye. Click on the plus sign. And under base node, look for distance sensor. Lastly, click add. This added the distance sensor, but we cannot see it. So go to the menu bar, click on view, optional rendering, and then select show distance sensor rays. As you can see, this is the ray from our distance sensor. Here's another way of looking at it. Now, as you can see, this is pointing towards the side. Let's change the rotation so that it's pointing forward. Go back to your VBOT scene tree. Click on distance sensor and under distance sensor, click on rotation. Change your angle to minus 1.57 radians. And as you can see, it's now pointing forward. To make it easy for us to access this sensor from our code, change the name for your distance sensor. Let's call it DS left and hit enter. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS world. Similarly, go to the other eye and under children, we will add a second distance sensor. Click on the plus sign, base node, distance sensor and click add. As you can see, this is also pointing towards the side. Similar to last time, go under distance sensor rotation and change the angle to minus 1.57 radians. Also remember to change the name so that it's easier to access it from our VPOTS controller code. Let's call this one DS right and hit enter. Once again, make sure to save your VPOTS world. With this, we now added two distance sensor to our robot. Next, let's write our VPOTS controller code. Similar to motors, even for distance sensor, you will first create instances to access them, then enable them, and then within your while loop, you will read your sensor data. To get started, let's first add the header to access our sensor. Next, let's initialize them. Next, we'll enable the distance sensor using time step.
make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. As our next step, we will now read the sensor values. In this case, let's also print these values so we get a sense of what the values look like. To print our values, we will add the STDIO header file. And let's print our values. Once again, make sure to save your VBOTS controller code. Because we have written this code in C, we also need to build it. Looks like I made a typo. Let's build it again. And I made another typo. The literal for double is F and not D similar to float and let's build it again okay we're good to go let me clear the console and run the simulation as you can see it's not printing the values it took me a couple of tries to figure this out it seems there's a bug and you need to print with a new line so go back to your code and in your print statement, at the end, include a new line. Let's save this code and build it again. Let's run the VBOT simulation. As you can see, I'm now getting values. Let's enable the viewing. and run the simulation again. And hit pause when the robot is closer to the wall. As you can see, the value dropped from 1000 to 953. I'll make use of this step function to run one simulation step at a time. Observe the console for the change in distance sensor values as the robot goes closer. As the robot became closer to an object, in this case, the wall, the values changed from 1000 to 350. We can use this value as an indicator of how close or far we are from any object. If we go back to our VBOT scene tree, under our distance sensor, there's an option called lookup table. If you click on it further, there are two rows. These two rows tells us how the values are mapped. Our first row tells us that anything that is at zero meters away should be marked as a zero. Our second row tells us anything that is 0.1 meters away should be given a value of 1000. So now all the distances between zero to 0 to 0.1 meter will be given a value between 0 to 1000. The last option in this row is for noise. By changing this value, you can add noise to your distance sensor reading. So far, we've learned how to drive our robot 
and read sensor values such as distance sensor in VBOTS. Next, we'll combine these two options to create our very first project, a wall following robot, also known as the maze solving robot. If you have any questions or doubts, use the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.